This is part two of the series of deploying Active Directory in the cloud. Um, now there, you'll see two different names uh, for this functionality in, in many places. Microsoft changed the name a couple of years ago and it hasn't quite caught on everywhere. It's a bit like the Twitter versus X thing. Uh, they want us to use this, but so much of the documentation uses Azure AD domain services. So the official name is Azure Intra Domain Services. Uh, but you'll see Azure Active Directory domain services all over the place. So what we're going to do is do a complete uh, push button install of how you would install the domain services using Terraform. And then we're going to, you know, do some things with it to demonstrate the features. And so the domain services, I'll just call it Active Domain Directory domain services, is a fully managed direct Active Directory pause solution with Azure which manages spinning up the domain controllers, managing the patching, the system updates. It takes, that, takes care of all that for you, and you just get the domain endpoints uh, within the, you know, the subnet where you create it. So what we're going to do in this solution is do the following tasks. We're going to configure secure networking. There's a subnet for Active Directory. You have to have a, sep have a separate subnet. There's also uh, a subnet for the VMs that we create and attach to the Active Directory. And then we glue up the Azure uh, Active Directory domain instances also act as a DNS server. So you want them in your DNS search pass, so we'll update that. So we'll deploy uh, from Terraform uh, AD domain services instance. Then we're going to spin up a Linux and Windows server to join them in Active Directory so you can log in using Active Directory domain credentials. When the Windows server starts, it's going to run an AD join script as a VM extension. And in the join script, it is going to first join with the domain credentials, which you have to retrieve. And then it's going to proceed and create four users and four groups using uh, POSIX compliant methods with the UID number, GID number and store all the credentials. They'll be generated as random credentials, store them in Azure Key Vault so we can reference them later when we actually want to log in to these instances and kick the tires and see how they work. Now, the Linux server has a boot script that uses triple SD to configure that Linux server for authentication with Active Directory. And this one is different than the other two examples. We're not using direct Active Directory domain joins with Linux. We're using LDAP. And we'll discuss that uh, a little bit later when we log on to the Linux machine and how it gets built. And then after we do all that uh, with those two instances in Active Directory, we're going to clean up resources, which is particularly important in this example because the you know generic vanilla Active Directory domain instance costs several hundred dollars a month. So if you're not using it, you probably want to turn it off. Or you should turn it off. So let's go to the architecture diagram for what we're going to build. And we're in the central uh, region. We create one virtual network that's ADVNet. And then we have two subnets in there. There's actually a third subnet, which is Bastion, which I don't cover that. But that's what we're going to use to actually interact with the instances. So in the first subnet, it's required for Active Directory to be in its own subnet. And so that's where we will deploy Active Directory, ends up creating two domain controllers um, within that. And once we create that, we'll actually attach these two domain controllers to be the DNS servers for this network. So there's a step for that. So once that's done, we then go and we join a Windows instance and a Linux instance. Now the Windows instance, you have to, you can't use PowerShell in the, in the custom data script. So we have to use a VM extension, but it acts the same way as a custom data. Essentially it runs its startup. It retrieves the domain join credentials from the key vault uses it to join, and then adds four users and four groups into Active Directory as local domain users and pulls them in. Then the second server that boots is Linux. It's going to do the same thing in that it's going to interact with Key Vault to get the AD join credentials, get in there, configure LDAP to use Linux as an authentication provider. What's the prerequisites? Well, we've got several prerequisites. Uh, we have a video called Azure and Terraform Easy Setup, which gives a very simple example. It builds a VM. So if you want to sort of a baby step into it, you might want to go that look at that video. But what you need is an Azure account, obviously. It has to be pay as, pay as you go if you want um, the Active Directory domain services. You need to 
AZCLI, you have to install the latest Terraform, and then you also need Microsoft, um, this provider enabled. And we do that for you in the join script. And then you also need um, global administrator. And so the check ENV script is going to check all that for you. And now we're ready to download the code and start the build. So we want to take this, I'm going to copy this and put it into my um, Ubuntu development environment. Paste that in. And so I've downloaded the code. And now we want to run check ENV. Rut row, global administrator is not assigned. So what we want to do is assign that. So I'm going to go into Azure Console. I'm going to click on Entra ID. And I'm going to go to Roles and Administrators. And I'm going to search for Global Administrator. And you'll see it's not there. My, my build is in Monaco. So I want to go and say Add. And I want to add M Monaco, and that's my build identity. So I add it, hit add, and go back. Now let's go to check ENV. Okay, now it passes, and we are ready to do the build. Okay, the build has completed. It, like I said, takes um, anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes to build everything. Most of that is in the Active Directory Domain uh, Services instance. And so at this point, let's walk through what actually got built. And I'm going to click, click on Resource Groups. And in the Resource Groups, the group that got created was AD Resource Group. So you click on that. And it's going to give you a list of everything that was built. Um, it's, it's kind of a noisy project because there's a lot of stuff built. Um, implicitly, like all these network interfaces are deployed by um, Terraform when it does the AD, the, the domain services instance. So uh, they're indirectly created. Then you've got, let's start with the networking. So if you click on the networking, there are, um, let's see here, sitting subnets. There are actually three subnets. Uh, the two application subnets, the Active Service Domain Services subnet, the VMs, and then I include Bastion because when we connect to these instances, I'm going to connect with uh, Bastion and not through the public internet. So that's it for the, the networking. Uh, there's some security groups that are attached uh, that's in the Terraform code. So let's go back to the resource group. And sort of the main event is this uh, Mike Cloud, Microsoft Intra Domain Services instance. And you click on here. And let's go to settings, I guess activity. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the synchronization with Azure AD. So let's talk about that for a minute. What does that mean? Well, uh, again, this is where Microsoft has changed the terminology in places, but in other places. Intra ID is what Azure AD is now called. And so if I go and look at, um, let me go and bring up another instance here. All these users here, these uh, intra Azure Active Directory users, whatever you want to call them, they get synchronized with the Active Directory domain. And so when we talk about how we get the join, do, domain join credentials, it's through the synchronization. You actually don't set the accounts directly in the Terraform for admin. You have to create these... Uh, accounts in your active your default tenant and then they get synchronized over there's really we took sort of the generics and settings for aads there's lots of things in here you can do trusts and replicas so it's a very full featured platform as a service offering and the cloud synchronization of the users is is kind of a, a it's kind of neat how they uh, have tried to integrate new users with old users so that is the cloud do domain services instance. Um, the next two things are, of course, 
the uh, Windows VM. So we have a Windows VM that is joined to the domain by a script. Um, we use a for GB, and then we have a Linux instance, which is also um, joined to the domain using SSD. It's a little bit smaller. You can get you could go with a cheaper instance in there. And they're all attached to the public internet, even though we're going to use Bastion to actually connect. Let's talk about the initial admin credentials. Azure uh, Domain Services is very unique in that you don't create the actual domain uh, join or admin credentials. What you have to do is um, create this user within the entered ID, like we just showed you before, uh, Active Directory Groups, Users, and we script this we create it in the terraform we create that in terraform and then we also script um the group so we have to create this special group called you know aad um ad admins dc administrators once you're in that group you're now a an admin that we can use to to log in all right so this is kind of cool, but again, it takes up to 15 to 30 minutes for the synchronization. So when you look at the join script, you'll notice that it's looping and it's trying and it's trying and it's trying and it tries for an hour. Um, and that seems to fit the bill. It's probably not something you would do normally because you're probably going to create your AD instance and populate it with some other asynchronous process. Uh, and you're not going to worry about, I got to have that, that user right now. Um, but we do handle it in a script here. Okay, let's walk through logging into the Windows instance with the AD admin credentials that we created via the synchronization method. So what I'm going to do is click on the instance, and I'm going to say connect via Bastion. And I'm going to go through, and it, it this is the user ID. I got it from the secrets. And so, uh, like I said, here's the secret value. And here's the password. Let me copy that. Paste that in. Do a show just to make sure I got the right. Yeah, that looks right. And I'm going to hit connect. And you'll see the server manager comes up by default. That's what it does for all admins when you're a domain admin. When you're joined, you're also joined to that machine as a local admin. So we're a local admin on this box. And so what we want to do is we want to go to, when we install the boot script, it's going to install all these plugin tools for the uh, administrative tools. So it installs all this Active Directory stuff, the DNS, but we're just going to focus on this one right here. Active Directories, Users, and Groups. So we click on that, and this is going to give you a view of the domain users and groups. And so... Um, we have here is this is the directory that the domain services builds for you correctly you've got uh users and computers users here these are the users that are synced over from the your your azure default tenant inside the azure user manager so the, these are the ones that got synced we looked at them before we look at the ones that were in there they're actually synced over then I created a new OU. By default, you can't do anything in these. The the uh, domain services instance locks all these AADC um, go use. You can't do anything. So it looks like you can't create users. But what you can do is you can create your own OU and then create users in that. So we create our own OU. This is in the script. We have the users. You click on that and you're going to get the four users and groups. Now, what you want to do uh, inside Active Directory to see those attributes, that GID number, UID attribute, is you want to go to View, Advanced Features, and you'll get a lot more stuff. So let's go back to the Users and Groups. And so let's look at Linux Admins. Now, here's your Linux Admins. You've got the members. But most importantly, on the Attribute Editor, if you scroll down, there's a GID number attribute. And that's from the table that there that we set it in the script. Every group that you want to access on the Linux side has to have a EGID number. Same way, if you look at users um, and go over here, and then we go to attribute editor, 
and you should have uh, GID number needs to be set. So 1001, that's mCloud users. And then you need to go to the N, and you're going to have U UID number, which is the second most important ones. Don't know why I can't seem to find them. There it is, UID number. So that's a 1003, or 10,003. I usually start my GID UID numbers at above 10,000. Uh, because the, the lower ones are tend to, tend to be used for system counts on, on Linux. You, you can certainly make them any number you want, but I, I just try to con avoid local account uh, problems or conflicts from the Active Directory accounts because they're usually different banks. And so from here, I could go and I could do, uh, I could create a new, you know, user or group. Um, so I can. It basically administrate this like any other Active Directory. Now that I've got into it, I've created my custom OU. I think they refer to these as domain local users and groups. Uh, they really encourage you to use the synced users and groups. Okay, so that's it for the um, Windows server. You'll notice we used the Bastion, so I'm in the browser. So I'm going to do the same thing for the Linux server. So I'm going to click on here. And I'm going to go back to my resource group, and I'm going to go look at the Linux one. So I'm going to click on uh, Linux, and I'm going to say connect via Bastion. And now I need to go get those credentials. So I'll go back to secrets. Let's log in as Raj Patel. And I'm going to go like that. Show secret value. Uh, I just need to put on Linux R Patel. And then I need to grab the credentials from here. Click on that. And let's hit connect. Let's do ID. Now, ID is going to tell me my ID. So 1000. 10,003, just like we looked before, and then mCloud users. So I can also do get ENT group uh, mCloud users, and it'll give you the list. And then I can do a Kumar IDE Davis uh, IDJS John Smith. And you see that all those values we set are now presented in Linux correctly. Uh, so that'll be your UID and GID numbers. Uh, so, um, also, there's this group called Git ENT Group Linux Admins. And you can see who am I. I am R. Patel. So, I should be able to do sudo bash. And there you go. I am now, who am I? I am running as root. Now, I want to go one thing here. I wanted to look at my SSD configuration. And let's nano SSD config. We're using LDAP mode, which uh, is what's preferred. Uh, the other examples, we're using AD mode. So that's it for the, the Linux version. Um, you can log in with SSH uh, with any of these guys. Okay, and now the only thing left to do is to be a good steward of your, your cloud account and turn off or destroy everything that we've built. This is particularly important with these domain services things because they, they, um, they're very expensive. Let me do destroy, let it get going. 